Hi, grade eight. Uh, we're on to topic three of fractions, which is still addition and subtraction, but just word sums. Now, unfortunately, I think every time we hear the word word sums, our blood pressure goes up and we start sweating. And I'd like to encourage you to keep an open mind because they're not nearly as bad as we think. So don't forget to hit pause and write down the questions so that you have good notes. So this first example says, there are five kilograms of potatoes. So you start with five kilograms. Sandra uses three quarters of a kilogram and then two and one third kilograms for mashed potatoes. How many potatoes, what's the mass of potatoes that she has left? Well, my first step is can we translate a word sum into a, um, you know, math sum? So can we um, translate the words into a sum? Now, this, this isn't particularly difficult because I have five kilograms and I'm taking away three quarters of a kilogram and then I'm taking away two and one third kilograms. So it's actually not too bad. Now my second step would be to divide into terms and then simplify each term. Now here these terms, this is a particularly easy question, there's not anything crazy going on in terms of order of work, but I do see this third term is not in a way in which I want it in order to be able to work with it. So don't forget that we changed we change mixed numbers to improper fractions. So my next step is going to be to change the mixed number. So that's minus, that's got nothing to do with my mixed number. If I have two holes, each of them in three pieces, that'll be six pieces, and then I have one left over. So that's seven pieces, and each hole was divided into three pieces. So that's my second step. Change my mixed number into an improper fraction. My third step, something we should be familiar with after the previous video, is we need to create a lowest common denominator. So we need to convert all fractions to a fraction over that LCD. So in this case, I'm going to be saying to myself, what's the LCD of 3 and 4, except there's also a 1 under the 5. Now, 1s don't really play a role here because 1 goes into everything. So I'm going to create an LCD and convert all fractions to a fraction over that LCD. So I asked myself what's the lowest common denominator in this case and my lowest common denominator in this case would be the lowest common denominator of 3 or 4. And we should know that 3 and 4 both go into 12. You don't have to pick the lowest common denominator but it makes it much easier. So the LCD of 3 and 4 is 12. So let me do my conversion. Now remember you can either write the whole thing over 12 or you can write it as each fraction over 12. I like I get a bit lazy so I generally write it as one fraction. Now my answer, remember you never add or subtract denominators, so my answer will also be over twelve. So I say to myself, what do you have to do to one to get it to twelve? Well I have to multiply by twelve. So I multiply the top by twelve, which is sixty. Why do you multiply the top and the bottom by the same thing? Because what we're trying to do is we're trying to effectively multiply by one so that we're not changing the value of the fraction. So 4 times 3 will give me 12, so 3 times 3 will give me 9, so that's minus 9. And finally, 3 times 4 will give me 12, and 7 times 4 is 28, so minus 28. Now basically I'm just going to add the tops or subtract the tops, so simplify the numerator. Now I would probably pick up my calculator if I was a little bit nervous about adding numbers and making a silly mistake, but 60 minus 9 minus 28 is 23. And now my last step, which everyone tends to forget, is check if your answer can simplify. Now I probably would do this in a calculator if I was being lazy. I would just go 23 over 12 and your calculator will tell you if it can simplify because it will either simplify or leave it the same. Now I know in this case it's going to stay the same because 23 is a prime number and so nothing goes into 23 except 23 and 1. You can write this as 1 and 11 twelfths as in a mixed number, but there's no reason to do that. So basically it's 23 over 12 kilograms. You don't have to change it. Right, so that actually wasn't any more difficult than the ones we have been doing. So let's try another example. Example 2. Haley has balloons. That's nice for her. A quarter of them are blue, two thirds of them are red. What fraction of them are green? Now, I should have probably written here the rest are green because otherwise you can't answer the question. So let us assume that the rest of them are green. So Haley has balloons. Well, I don't 
know how many balloons she has but it doesn't matter because I'm working in fractions so I'm going to assume that she has as a fraction she has a whole set of balloons then I'm going to take away one quarter of those balloons and then I'm going to take away two-thirds of those balloons so this is an interesting question because you don't know how many to start with but it doesn't matter I'm not saying how many balloons does she have left I'm saying what fraction does she have left so basically I'm gonna treat the number of balloons she has as the whole there are a whole set of balloons so basically there's one over one there's a whole set of balloons and I'm gonna take away a quarter of those balloons and then two-thirds of those balloons now I'm going to follow the same steps. There are no mixed numbers here, so I need an LCD. My LCD is 12, which is exactly the same as before. So I'm going to multiply, let's pick a different color. I'm going to multiply this by 12, then this by 12, so this is 12. So that makes sense because they're all the balloons. So 12 12 will be all the balloons. I multiply this by 3, multiply by 3, so this is minus 9. Um, I don't know why I wrote minus 9, that's just really silly. <laughs> Um, 1 times 3 is 3, not 9. And lastly, I'm multiplying 3 by 4 and 2 by 4, so it's minus 8. Now, if I'm going to get a negative number, I definitely know I've done something wrong because I can't have a negative fraction of green balloons. Of course, you can have a negative amount of lots of things, but not a number of potatoes or fractions of balloons. Now, fortunately, in this case, 12 take away 3 take away 8 is 1. So actually, one twelfth of the balloons are green. So interesting one because it's quite a difficult one to know where to start. And we have to assume that basically she has a whole set of balloons. So it's one set of balloons. So we start with one. Okay, and our last example is probably my favorite. This is a very difficult example because it's the start of something called bar models. Now, we're not going to use bar models very much in the exercise following today's lesson, but in the future, we are going to use bar models a lot. And once you get the hang of bar models, it's amazing how much easier these types of questions become. So I thought I'd throw a bar model example in here just to kind of start sowing the seeds of where we're moving to. I really have started to love these because it takes complicated questions and makes them so much easier. So Fiona has some sweets. Okay, I don't know how many. She gives a quarter of them to Michelle and then gives five-eighths of the remainder of them to Nina. If she has 36 sweets left over, how many sweets does she have in the beginning? Now, even if you ask a seasoned maths person, this is a challenging question. So what we do is we use something called a bar model, which is literally drawing bars. So basically, I'm going to draw a bar. There we go. Fiona has some sweets, so let that represent the sweets. She gives a quarter of them to Michelle. So I'm going to take my bar and divide it into four pieces. So one, two, three, four. Why did I divide it into four? Because this denominator was four. So I'm taking my sweets and I'm dividing them into four parts. Now she gives one quarter of these to Michelle. So one part out of the four. Which means what does she have left? She has this part left, which is three quarters. So I'm going to draw her leftovers. Now I'm not going to divide them up into quarters again because I don't know what she's going to do yet. So she has three quarters of the originals left. Now this question then says, and this is the important part, she gives five eighths of the remainder so of these remaining not of the originals of the ones remaining she gives away five eighths now this has a denominator of eight so I'm going to divide one two three four five six and as you can see I ran out of space so let me mm, that wasn't ideal so let me start again um, make my bars. They don't have to be, it's just a picture. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's a bit better. It's just a picture. So I didn't want to extend it here because I'm trying to represent that this represents the same number as before. But it, they don't have to be equally, you know, spaced or whatever. It's just a picture. So I've divided into eight 
because apparently she gives five eighths of them. So one, two, three, four, five. She gives these five eighths away. Now, if she gives those away to Nina, what will she have left? Well, it's very clear to me that she has three blocks out of eight left over. Now, this question says left over. If Fiona has 36 sweets left over, so now I know that these three blocks represent 36 sweets. Now, why is that important? Because basically, what we're going to learn over time in doing a lot of bar models is my whole idea is can I figure out what one block is worth? Because if I can figure out what one block is worth, you can figure out anything. So now that I know that three blocks is 36, if I divide by three and I divide by three, I know that one block in this example here, because remember there's different size blocks, but in that, in that particular part of this question, one block represented 12 sweets. So that means that's 12 sweets, that's 12 sweets, that's 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12. So now, what are the total number of sweets that she has? Well, she has eight blocks of 12 sweets each. So she has 96 sweets. Once she's given the first, but she gave away to Michelle, she lands up with 96 sweets before she starts giving some to Nina. So I'm just going to say this again. We are going to move a lot into bar models in the future. So this is just one example. We're not going to practice this a lot after this particular exercise. I just thought it would be nice to start getting used to it. And the whole aim is to figure out what one block is. Because once you know one block, you can figure out everything. Now I was talking blocks in the second part. If I look at the first part, now let's move backwards. So that means that these three blocks here represent 96 sweets because that's what she had left over. So in this example now, 96 sweets equals three blocks. Remember these were, I divided them into different size blocks. So this is going backwards now. So 96 was three blocks of the original. So if I divide by three to get one block, if I divide by 3, I get 32 sweets, I think, if I'm dividing correctly, which means in the original, this would have been worth 32 sweets, 32 sweets, 32 sweets, and 32 sweets. So how much did she originally have? She originally had 4 blocks of 32 sweets. So just working backwards and finding out what one block in each case represented was an excellent idea here. So therefore she had four blocks of 32 sweets to start with which is 128 sweets. Really really nice question. Quite tough and so I think there's only one example in the exercise that follows this and then we're going to do a fair amount of bar modeling when we get to kind of more involved in fractions and then in the next section which you do which is ratio and proportion and once we've done it quite a lot this is just such a lovely way to do questions and in a way it's a way that you'll end up loving so don't worry if it feels a little bit uncomfortable at first it's just quite a different way of viewing it but it's very tangible and oh, it's just amazing